Hey guys, Frank here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the SNES I repaired in my previous video. Now it's still working perfectly fine, as you can see. I've just muted it so there's no sound. Um, what I want to do today with this SNES is a C Sync mod, and I'll show you why. How good friend um, Dot Crawl uh, has made an appearance. Uh, as you can see, you can see it um, all over the image. Now you get that when you use composite video for sync over RGB SCART. Um, I mentioned this in my previous video where I repaired this. Um, I mentioned a little bit about the dot crawl. And yeah, what I want to do with this console is C-Sync mod it. So it outputs C-Sync instead of composite video. Uh, and then we should get rid of all this horrible dot crawl on the image. Now I should be able to able to do it uh, to this SNES because this is the twin PPU SNES model and I know one of them outputs uh, TTL C-Sync so yeah that's what I'm going to do to this console is C-Sync mod it to get rid of that ugly horrible dot crawl so stick around and we'll crack on with that time to get in this SNES no, I'm not going to film that. Um, I've already shown you how you can get into a SNES if you watched the previous video where I repaired this console. And um, what I'm going to do is just get down to the motherboard and we can work on that from there. Um, what I want to explain though is something very important. When you're going to work on a SNES, you should always power cycle it uh, with no power connected. And what I mean by that is if you look at the SNES, it's unplugged, there's nothing there. Um, but watch what happens when I throw the power switch, watch the power indicator come on for a brief second. There you go. There's, you know, so there's power in the SNES even though there's nothing uh, power in it and you need to, to, to just power cycle it just to get rid of that um, excess power that's in there. Otherwise, because if, if there's excess power in there and you're working on something and you short something, you can damage the SNES because there's still power inside it. So yeah, just power cycle it before you work on it. Okay, what I want to do is quickly show you uh, on this SNES model schematic where C-Sync is generated. If we look at this big chip on the left, this is PPU2. And if we look at pin 100 just here, we can see C-Sync. Uh, so that is where C-Sync is generated by the PPU2. Now what I've done is I've marked it, the trace in red just so it's easy to follow. So if we follow it, we come along, we go straight down and we go straight into the video encoder chip on pin 8. Now looking at PPU2 and the C-Sync signal coming out of it, what I can see is the label telling me that it is active low when you see a line across the label like this across the top of the label uh, it tells you that it's active low now what that is telling me about the c-sync signal coming out of this ppu2 is that it's at ttl level now what i want to do is just fire up my scope and confirm that i've got the board we're all powered up focus focus there you go there's that horrible dot crawl um, if we look at the board here's PPU1 here's PPU2 now conveniently Nintendo's marked pin 100 which we know is uh, C-Sync now the reason I have the board out like this is because I want to measure with my scope that that is indeed uh, 5 volt TTL C-Sync um, I don't want to assume it is, you know what the assumption is, assumption is the mother of all cups. So I want to verify that that is indeed TTL 5 volt C-Sync. So I'm just going to fire up my scope. I'm going to do a quick measure of that just to make sure it's at 5 volts. So okay, I'm all up top, my scope probes up top, we're still running. I've got to be uh, very careful because uh, this is holding on by its uh, skin of its teeth. Um, I've actually got it poked into a VR, a nice convenient VR. 
So here's pin 100 of PPU2. That goes off to pin 8 of the video encoder chip. And thankfully there is a via just above pin 8. Uh, that is connected to pin 8 so I can get my scope probe in it. And what I can do is confirm that that is indeed TTLC sync. If you look I'm on 1 volt per division and let's count the vertical squares 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and that's 5 volt TTLC sync. Now what you can also see is every now and again you'll see a pulse go through that's the vertical sync and these little smaller pulses are the horizontal sync and if I zoom out with my scope, sorry not zooming in, if I zoom out you'll see them better, there you go every now and again you'll see a horizontal sync, uh, sorry a vertical sync go through. So yeah, that is indeed 5 volt TTLC sync. So okay, what I want to talk to you about now is how we're going to perform this mod. Um, this is a schematic that shows how the SNES outputs its video. Um, what I want to concentrate on at the moment is not this red part, I want you to follow the blue part. That's the original composite video signal. So if we look here, we've got our video encoder chip. This is a DAC digital to analog converter. It takes all the digital signals, converts them to analog, and then outputs them on the video out so we can get an analog picture. Now if we look at pin 8, here's our C-Sync coming into pin 8. If we look at pin 7, this is video out, basically composite video. If we follow it, we can see it branches off into two. One off goes off to the RF modulator. Obviously the RF modulator needs a, a signal to modulate RF, video out. We also branch off. Now we go through some amplification. We come along, we go up, we go through some clamping diodes. This clamps the input and output so we don't get any transient spikes when we're plugging something in. Uh, it comes up, it comes along and it goes out on pin 9 and that's basically our composite video is generated by the SNES and goes out to the AV port on the back. Now the mod we're going to do is very simple. What I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to disable composite video going to pin 9. I'm going to take the C-Sync signal I'm going to tap into that. I'm going to send that through a 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor that will kill off any DC offset if there is any then I'm going to go to through a 430 ohm resistor that's so we can attenuate our signal and I'm going to go straight to pin 9 and that should wire in C-Sync and hopefully get rid of the horrible dot crawl and we should have a really nice picture when it comes to outputting video on our SNES through RGB I've already covered this but I'll go for it again Here's pin 100 of PPU2, this is C-Sync out. Now this is connected directly to pin 8 of this video encoder chip. So if we count the pins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if we look, there's a nice via, very convenient. Now that's great because I was worried that I'd have to solder to one of these two points and then go round the back of the board and out. Um, that means I can find that via on the opposite side of the board and do the mod completely on the back of the console. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, but first I need to cut the trace to pin 9 of this connector which is composite video. And I'm going to do that next. What we're looking at now is the AV out for the SNES and pin 9 this one here is composite video now what I need to do is disable composite video going to this pin now you can't see it because Nintendo has decided to put a conformal coating over the bottom of the board which completely hides the traces so uh, thanks for doing that Nintendo it makes repairing a lot easier doing that you fucking idiots but anyway little run over um, there's a, a tiny little trace that comes up like this and goes to pin 9. What I need to do is cut that. Now, because I can't see the trace, the only way I'm going to know when I've cut that is the bottom of 
capacitor C50 is connected directly to pin 9 so once I do cut through that trace I shouldn't have continuity between this place here and this place here so what I'm going to do is get on with cutting that trace I've cut the trace, the tiny trace that goes to pin 9 of the Avery out just here hopefully you can see that now just off camera I did a continuity check between the bottom of this capacitor just here and pin 9 of the AV port and they're no longer connected so that pin now is floating and what I can do now is wire in my C-Sync mod I have the passive components I need to perform the C-Sync mod first I have a 10 volt 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and I also have a 430 ohm resistor now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these two wired up I'll get them prepared and ready to put in the system once I've done that I'll let you have a look what those look like okay that's the capacitor and resistor and the wires taken care of what I'm going to do now is get some heat shrink and just make sure this looks nice and neat that's the capacitor and resistor heat shrink uh, along with the wires nothing's going to short now and um, what I have done is I've left the top open on the capacitor just in case something wrong happens um, it still allows the capacitor to vent but yeah time to get this in the SNES and finish off this C-Sync mod what I've done is I found the via on the opposite side it's just here I put a little mark so I remember where it is and what I've done is just put a little tiny bit of solder in there just to flow it into the via um, and that's ceasing out then we're going to go through a capacitor for a resistor and we're going to connect to pin 9 so what I'll do is I'll get that wired in and let you have a look what that looks like once it's done so that's the C-Sync model wired in as you can see here's C-Sync comes out goes into the positive leg of the 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor the negative leg comes out we go through a 430M resistor we go along we come up and we connect to the pin 9 that we cut uh, and that's the C-Sync mod what I'm going to do now is just flip this over put a game in it give it a quick, quick test just make sure it works before I put it all back together so okay mod's been performed I've turned it back to its front I've got a game in the cartridge slot Super Mario World let's power on see if we've eliminated the dot crawl by C-Sync modding it and we have look how beautiful that picture looks nice and sharp none of that horrible dot crawl so yeah and that's C-Sync modded at this SNES what I'm going to do now is get the system put back together and I can wrap up the video look how fantastic that picture is that's C-Sync for you okay as you can see we're all back together should have a C-Sync modded console now let's power on and see what picture we get absolutely beautiful no more dot crawl it's been completely eliminated by C-Sync modding the console and that's what you get when you send C-Sync over RGB Scott for sync instead of composite video for sync over RGB Scott so yeah, there you go guys, hope you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one, look at that picture, it's great, sweet. <laughs>